Our beloved country stands at a critical crossroads. The very pillars of our democracy are under siege by an administration that has shown a blatant disregard for the rule of law and the sanctity of our independent institutions. It is our moral duty to defend our country. We need to unite under a common cause to fight to preserve the integrity of our judiciary and the very soul of our democracy. Ladies and gentlemen, it will surprise you to know that President Akufua, who has already packed the Supreme Court with an unprecedented 15 appointments, is now conspiring with the Chief Justice of the Republic of Ghana, Justice Gertrude Araba Isabel Tokun, to add five more justices to our highest courts. This isn't just a political maneuver of an already failed president. It is also an assault on our democracy, a betrayal of public trust, and a direct threat to the integrity of our judicial system. Imagine the dire consequences of this reckless action. This government stops at nothing and is determined to create a judiciary that is no longer a check on executive power, but a mere extension of it. This is not a Ghana our forefathers fought for. This is not a democracy we pledge to uphold. Our nation deserves better, and it is our duty to stand up and protect the very foundations of our democracy. Despite the huge number of just judges appointed by President Akufua to the Superior Court and lower courts, and the 15 judges that he has already appointed to the Supreme Court in particular, the NDC has become aware of a grand conspiracy hatched by President Akufuado and the Chief Justice to appoint additional five judges to the Supreme Court. We have cited a shocking and deeply disturbing letter from Chief Justice Gertrude Tokono to President Akufuado, requesting the appointment of five new judges to the Supreme Court of Ghana. This request from the Chief Justice it's not only a blatant violation of our constitution, but also a flagrant disregard for the established customs and traditions that guide the nomination of judges to our nation's highest courts. The names for the five judges put forward by the Chief Justice in her unconstitutional, unsolicited, and self-serving request to the president include her leadership justice Angelina Mason Omiya. His Lordship Justice Eric J. Baffer, His Lordship Justice Edward Amaku Asante, a Leadership Justice Pamela C. A. Kurantin, and a Leadership Justice Ifia Asari Bojo, a judge who is currently presiding over what we call the persecution of the Honorable Minority Leader Dr. Kesiel Atufos. It is interesting to note that this brazen unsolicited request of the Chief Justice, dated 30th May 2024, was promptly received by President Akufuado on 4th June 2024. Subsequent to that, the Attorney General, who is the Chief Executor of the Minority Leader in the Court of Justice of Ifia Asaribuji, brazenly followed with another letter dated 21st June 2024, expressing support for the Chief Justice's unsolicited and unconstitutional requests. The Chief Justice and the Attorney General in agreement and in furtherance of the present grand agenda to pack the courts and annex the judiciary as an, an, an extension of the new majority party. An emergency judicial council meeting was hurriedly convened on 24 June 2024 by the Chief Justice, who is also the chair of the judicial council. At the same meeting, the Chief Justice, who on the face of the record, initiated an unsolicited request for the additional five justices to be appointed to the Supreme Court, presented the Attorney General's letter of 21st June 2024 to make a case to the Council for this appointment. Interestingly, at that meeting, 
The Chief Justice remained completely silent about her own unconstitutional and self serving request to the President. Our unimpeachable sources tell us that the Judicial Council, however, unanimously stood against the reckless schemes of both the President and the Chief Justice. We are further informed that all the members of the Judicial Council rejected the proposal, citing poor and dangerous times especially with general elections only six months away. Members of the Judicial Council insisted that the next government be given the opportunity to consider the argument for the expansion in the number of Supreme Court justices, if at all necessary. Ladies and gentlemen, we have in our possession a letter signed by the President of the Ghana Bar Association, Yao Chambo Bwafo Esquire. Dated 29th April 2024, and addressed to President Akufuara. In this letter, the Ghana Bar Association objected to the clandestine approach by President Akufuara to appoint five additional judges to Ghana Supreme Court, thereby increasing the number of judges on the Supreme Court to 20. President Akufuara, with the connivance of the Chief Justice, had sought to hide his attempt to further pack the Supreme Court under the guise of a proposal for a minimum ceiling of 20 judges on Ghana's Supreme Court bench. The GBA's disagreement, which we find well-grounded and well-reasoned, is premised on the fact that the present proposal should have come in the form of a proposed amendment of Article 128.1 of the 1992 Constitution to set a new ceiling for the number of judges on the Supreme Court, which currently consists of the Chief Justice and a minimum of nine other justices. The GPA argued forcefully that the request by President Akufua and Chief Justice Getro Tokonu to increase the minimum number of justices of the Supreme Court to 20 will lead to the circumvention of the required constitutional amendment, hence their rejection of sin. The GPA proposed a review of the constitution of the conventional number of justices to, of the Supreme Court every 10 years, calling for broader consultations with other key stakeholders, such as the Council of States and Parliament. From the foregoing, it is clear that the Chief Justice sought to put forward the names of these judges as though they were being proposed by the Attorney General on behalf of President Nakofo. We are completely shocked and scandalized by the extent to which the Honorable Chief Justice was prepared to consciously set, sidestep the due process and even breach the Constitution just to please the President and aid him to execute his unholy agenda to pack the Supreme Court. Article 1442 of the 1992 Constitution enjoins the President to make such appointments to the Supreme Court on the advice of the Judicial Council in consultation with the Council of State and subject to parliamentary approval. In the wisdom of the framers of the Constitution, this consultative process is designed to protect the independence of the Judiciary. Contrary to this constitutional imperative, the Chief Justice singularly constituted herself into the Judicial Council and unilaterally acted in his name and on his behalf. By electing to write to President Akofa, requesting for this appointment and seeking a post facto ratification from the Judicial Council, the Chief Justice sought to turn the Council into a mere rubber stamp. Nowhere in the Constitution is the Chief Justice named as the one to recommend persons to the President for appointment to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. We wish to state, without any equivocation, that the Chief Justice's letter is illegal and of no effect. Her actions have completely turned the due process on its head and compromised her independence as the head of the judiciary. We are concerned about a worrying pattern which irresistibly suggests that the president is appointing only royals of his party to this court to have control of the judiciary and escape post-regime accountability. 
It is also very clear that the president is packing the calls ahead of the impending presidential and parliamentary elections with judges who are sympathetic to his party. Such deliberate politicization and bastardization of independent institutions of state, including the judiciary, will negatively impact the peace and stability of our country. It is tried knowledge that without a fair and impartial judiciary, democracy and constitutionalism will suffer. That is why this must be an issue of huge national concern as it adds to the many other issues that already pose big threats to the peace and stability of our democracy. Already, President Akufuad was appointed as many as 15 judges to the same Supreme Court since 2017. This exceeds the seven appointments made to the Supreme Court by both President John Ivan Zetamiros and President John Mahama over the eight years of the NBC. President Mills appointed three judges to the Supreme Court, while President Mahama appointed four judges to the APS Court. If President Akufuado and the Chief Justice are not restrained in their unholy alliance to appoint five additional judges to the Supreme Court, it will bring to 20 the number of judges appointed by President Akufuado alone to the Supreme Court. While the Constitution of Ghana does not put a cap on the number of judges to be appointed to the Supreme Court. It is very clear that the framers had operated on a reasonable assumption that all presidents would be mindful of endless appointment to the apex court and its consequences. The framers of the constitution clearly did not contemplate an Akufuado presidency, where the apex court would become packed with loyalists of the president and his political party. With general elections set to take place just in a few months, we are of the view that President Akufaro must immediately halt his plans to make any further appointment to the superior courts. This is in view of the fact that he has already packed the court with too many of his royalties to the disbelief of many right-thinking Ghanaians and consummate democracy. Again, there are enough judges on the bench at this particular point in time to deal with the judicial issues. More important, with elections on the horizon, it is fair that any such appointment with far-reaching implications on this constitutional democracy should be left to the next president of the Republic of Ghana. And this is common practice all over the world. It is only under the number that this is being totally disrespectful. Kufwa has already abdicated his position as president a very long time ago when he declared that the next president will fix the economic mess that he and Vice President Elijah Mawina have created. The president must be, must be reminded that such long sided appointment, particularly to the judiciary, is a big factor in the widely held perception of a politically biased and hostile judiciary in the administration of justice at the, at the APS court, especially in matters involving the end. President Akufuado must therefore take a cue and desist from any further appointment to the Supreme Court at this time in order to help de-escalate the perception of bias on the part of the judiciary. The latest maneuvering between the Chief Justice and, president and the President adds to the series of happenings in the judiciary that paint a picture of bias and imbalance. Further packing of the court will do very little to restore trust and confidence in the judiciary, which already is at an all-time low. It can, in fact, fuel legitimate concern that it is being done to ensure the presence of an overwhelming number of judges who are sympathetic to the current regime, who could be called upon to shield members of this government from scrutiny and to frustrate any future effort at exacting accountability from them when they leave power. The NDC 
Find the return by the Chief Justice that the latest aborting appointment were necessary because of the load of cases to be completely untenable and without any grounds. Furthermore, we have noted a trend of very speedy promotion of relatively newly minted judges over and above their more experienced seniors at the bench. This undermines the spirit of meritocracy, which is essential for proper administration of justice and holds the potential to pressure such judges into delivering rulings that may catch the eye of the appointing authority. Also, the unexplained transfers of some judges in the immediate aftermath of their judgments in high-profile political cases raises eyebrows. The impression created from this is that judges who do not conform to some expectation of the Chief Justice in the present will receive subtle retribution cloaked in administrative processes for their troubles. Democratic governance requires that certain standards are met within all arms of government. At no point must independent institutions of states be joined at the heap with the executive to further its interests. Friends from the media, the current posturing of the Chief Justice and their involvement in the, in the nomination of more judges to the Supreme Court do not inspire confidence that the judiciary is sufficiently independent from the Akufuado Bahumia administration. Again, the naked abuse of power by President Akufuado and his overzealous desire to control all arms of government poses a grave danger to our democracy and governance arena. President Akufuado has thought that the following happenings in Kenya serve as a reminder that there is a terrible to the to conclude, we are calling on all Ghanaians to rise up against this tyranny. We must protect our democracy, our judiciary, and our future. The actions of President Akufuado and his cohorts are not just political games, they are existential threats to the very fabric of our nation. It is time to stand up, it is time to speak out, it is time to demand justice. Now, the NDC urgently demands the following actions. One, an immediate halt of further Supreme Court appointment. We demand that President Akufwa immediately stop any plans to appoint additional judges to the Supreme Court. This reckless action is not just a political maneuver, it is an outrageous assault on our democracy and a betrayal of public trust. Imagine the anger and disbelief as we watch our judiciary being transformed into a puppet of the elect, eroding the very checks and balances that protect our freedom. Two, adherence to constitutional processes. We demand that any future appointment to the Supreme Court must strictly follow the constitutional process, including consultation with the Judicial Council. This blatant disregard for established procedures is not only unconstitutional, but also morally reprehensible. It is a slap in the face to every Ghanaian who believes in the rule of law and the sanctity of our democratic institutions. Three, transparency and accountability. We call for the full disclosure of the criteria and process used for the selection of these judges. This is essential to ensure transparency and accountability. The clandestine and backdoor dealings to appoint royalists represents a disgrace. This healing agenda fuels public distrust and fosters a culture of corruption and undermines the integrity of our judiciary. Four, judicial independence. We call on the Chief Justice to uphold the independence of the judiciary by resisting any pressure from the executive to influence judicial appointments. The judiciary is the last bastion of justice and its independence is sacrosanct. By compromising this independence, the NPP is not just bending the law, they are breaking the very backbone of our democracy. Five, immediate reversal of the unconstitutional appointment request. We demand 
by the Chief Justice retrying the unconstitutional request to appoint additional judges and ensure future actions strictly aligned with legal and ethical standards. This brazen overreach into the judicial realm is unforgivable. It is time to reverse these illegal actions and restore faith in our judicial system. Six, public and civil society engagement. The government must engage with civil society, legal professionals, and the public to discuss and review the process of judicial appointment, to restore trust and ensure fairness. The voice of the people must be heard. The current administration's attempt to silence dissent and operate in the shadows represent the direct threat to our democratic principles. So, ensuring merit-based appointment. Future judicial appointment must be based on merit, experience, and integrity, rather than political affiliations or loyalties. This is not just about filling seats. It is about ensuring justice for all Ghanaians. The NPP's nepotism and cronyism are creating a judiciary that serves only their interests and not the interests of the Our judges must be free to uphold the law without fearing for their careers or their lives. The NDP status of intimidation and coercion must be stopped to preserve the sanctity of our judiciary. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our beloved nation stands at a, at a precipice. Our democracy, basically built by the sacrifices of our forebears, is under a great threat from those who are sworn to uphold it. The blatant, unconstitutional actions of President Akufuado and Chief Justice Gertrude Kutogono are not just political maneuvers. They are a direct assault on our judicial independence and the very soul of our democracy. Imagine a gun where the judiciary becomes a mere extension of a failed executive, a tool for political retribution rather than justice. This is not a Ghana we pledge to fight for. This is not a Ghana we want to pass down to our children. We cannot and we must not remain silent. Our silence will only embolden those who seek to undermine our democratic institutions. We must rise with one voice, loud and clear, to defend our judiciary, to protect our democracy, and to preserve the integrity of our country. Let every Ghanaian, young and old, men and women from every corner of our land, stand up against the travesty and brazen attempt to hijack the judiciary. Civil society, the clergy, and all democracy-loving citizens must join hands in this fight. This is not just about political affiliations. This is about the very future of our nation. Let us show the world that Ghanaians will not stand for tyranny, for corruption, and for the erosion of our democratic values. Let us fight with every breath to ensure that justice prevails to ensure that our institutions remain independent and that our democracy remains strong. For the sake of our children, for the sake of our future, let us unite and demand accountability. Let us rise and reclaim our nation from the grip of those who seek to destroy it. This is our God. This is our democracy. And we defend it with every fiber of our being. Thank you very much. Wow.